and we're just going to gently sweep it side to side and see if there's a frequency that really doesn't sound good. In its fundamental version, when GarageBand was first released, all you had was this. <laughs> so this was your EQ. Treble, how much treble, and how much bass. All of this was added afterwards. All your plugins at EQ didn't used to have all of these. You didn't even have these things out here. So you had nothing apart from that. So I kind of grew up, when I first started using GarageBand version 2.0, it was all about this. So this, but this is a good way of kind of learning a little bit about the fundamentals of EQ. So your treble knob here is literally like the treble on your stereo, on your home stereo or on your Walkman or whatever it is. It'll turn the treble of this sound up and down. So let's play this vocal. Oh my life I've dreamed of let's how turn the to serve, up. but I've never had the time to learn being here in the beat. So hopefully you're hearing that that is making it sound super crispy. Yeah because the treble's gone up. If we do the opposite, each I should probably know. It's lost all that treble. I'm afraid of sharks and stuff. So in its fundamental form, your treble's being turned up and down. Your bass, you can do the same sort of thing here. So if we play this, Dreamed of let's how turn up the bass. Serve, but I've never had the time to learn. And turn it down. Being here in the beach, I should probably know. And it actually adjusts it there. Now, if we jump in here to our visual EQ, the cool thing is that we can see what this will be doing because all this is doing now is controlling that visual EQ. So for instance, if the bass is all the way down here, what this is actually doing from an EQ curve point of view is doing a high pass filter. So it's cutting off all the frequencies below 200 hertz and then rolling up to here. So you're losing a lot of that low end. If we flip this around and we come out to here and we turn the bass all the way up, we can come back in here and see what that's going to do. Yeah, there you go. It's done a shelf. So it's shelved everything from that 200 hertz. The same with your other knob. If you grab your other knob here and you put your treble knob up, let's put that bass back to there, and you see what this has done to your visual EQ. Yeah, see how it's, it's raising it up? It's giving you a shelf up there from 6 kilohertz. And exactly the same thing if you wanted to bring this knob down. It goes the other way and we come back into here, it's doing the same sort of thing. So in fundamentally, all that's doing is doing nothing to the mids, it's literally just turning the bass up or down and turning the treble up and down. It's doing this one at about 5,000 hertz and this one at about 200 hertz. So that's a very simple way. So that's your, your, your super simple and your intermediate when it comes to EQ. But there's a whole bunch of other things you can do. And we'll start by playing around with the visual EQ because you'll notice here that we also have some mid-range. So we can find a frequency here in the middle and turn it up and down. We've got our bass here that we can turn up and down and we've got our top end here. Now, all we can really use is what's built in here. So we can only use the, the dots here and they're only what is called a parametric change. So you can't do things like a shelf, like a proper shelf or a low pass or, or any of the other types of filters that we'll show you when we get to the band EQ in a moment. Moment. The other thing that Visual EQ has, and I suggest you very carefully think about how often you use this, is the analyzer. The analyzer is good if you do want to take a look at where the frequencies are landing here. So if we again go back to the start of this vocal and we take a play. Oh my life I've dreamed of how to serve, but I've never had the time to learn. Being here in the beach, I should probably know. So you can see in the mid-range there, the notes I'm actually hitting. You can see all the frequencies, the overtones of the frequencies there. You can see a little rumble in the low end there as well, which is probably more that bass and guitar and drums that are coming through in the bleed. So if I played this, what I'd probably want to do is grab this. I'm afraid of sharks and stuff and I don't want to bite it in the because I don't really want, see these little bits that are lobbing around here at 100 hertz and 150 hertz, I don't want those. So I'd probably drop that down there. The mid-range here, I'd probably want to leave in the middle there because I don't think I need to enhance anything in this one. And I'd probably want to roll off the top end like I have been doing to get. The sand, I'm just going to stay on the shore and drink some beer. Because I don't know what's in the... And in fact, because this is a condenser mic, I'm finding a little bit crispier there. So I might even want to do something a little bit like that just to make it a little bit nicer in the middle. All my life I've dreamed of how to serve. Because what you can do with EQ is use the sweep method where you basically sweep left to right and you find a frequency by boosting it. And that's how you can identify some of those nasty nasally tones that you may want to remove by putting it down. But I've never had the time to learn. Being here in the beach, I should probably know. 
I'm afraid of sharks and stuff and I don't. So you can go with something like that. Now what you're going to find here though is because of the basic setup of the visual EQ, you're removing a lot of stuff that you may not want to. So for instance, I may actually want this sparkle at the very top end here to stay in there, but I might want to cut it just before there. So I may not want to lose all that nice sort of air, what we call air, or it's a bit of a wanky term, but the, the, that sparkle in the top end, but I may want to drop it down there. So that's another option I'd have with this one and it would sound more like this. All my life I've dreamed of how to surf, but I've never had the time to learn. Being here in the beach, I should probably... So you can still choose to remove any of those frequencies that you might not like that are too kind of nasally, but you may want to sort of adjust it and uh, tweak it. Because remember, there is no right, there is no wrong. It is whatever sounds good and whatever sounds good to you. The other thing I'll mention at this point is that EQing when you're just soloed is generally not the right idea because your EQ is to try and make your instruments balance with the rest of them. So I'm just showing you this and I'm soloing this because I wanted to explain how this all works but in reality if i was eqing this vocal i would have it in the mix because you can hear now that with the rest of the tracks there because i've made some cuts and again eq should be more about cutting than adding subtractive as opposed to additive it's actually a lot it needs to go up so i need to boost the gain so what you might find is and the reason you've got a gain slider over here is that as you're cutting it's actually reducing the overall volume. So you, once you've found the EQ that sounds right, you can then adjust it back in to mix it back in with your track. Being here in the beach, I should probably know. I'm afraid of sharks and stuff. And so again, it's probably still a little bit crispy, but with the visual EQ, there's kind of limitations around that one. The main reason I wanted to talk about EQ here today was to talk about this plugin. So if we hit the plus button here, we will go to audio unit extensions. And if we scroll to the bottom, uh, we will go to the band EQ and we'll tap on band EQ. So this is the brand new band EQ. Now you need to double tap on one of these to actually make it active and then you can actually adjust it. So the cool thing about this is you'll see that it's really easy to put this band on a frequency and then to change the Q setting so you can make it really wide, you can make it really narrow. So all you need to do to do that, we'll just re rehash it, double tap it, bring it back here. So if it's not on, so you can tap these and each one you tap will turn on a new one and they're all color coded there. So let's just go one by one here. Now this one at the start here, you generally don't want this to be a parametric because you don't really want to leave all the stuff here of your base and then just have a little bit cut out. So you can actually change it. If you tap up here, you can change it. And there's a whole bunch here. You've got low pass, high pass, band pass, you've got shelves, you've got everything that you can possibly use here. So we want a probably either a Butterworth or a resonant high pass filter. So we'll put the Butterworth on there, which is just going to give you that smooth. Is it called Butterworth because it's smooth? <laughs> I don't know. So if we set this, so there's our 100 hertz. There's about the 200 hertz. So what this is doing is it's doing a proper high pass filter. Because remember the other one that we had? We couldn't actually position it properly and it wasn't rolling it off. It was literally just a, a parametric EQ that happened to be at the low end. So this is going to give us a proper low pass filter. So if we uh, play our vocal on this one, we'll just solo it so it can take a listen. I've always wanted to learn to so there's that. I'm always worried about what might be underneath. So that's just showing you what this uh, high pass filter is doing. It's called a high pass filter because it allows everything above that frequency to go through. So you can see if we set it to here, it's uh, at around about uh, 200 hertz. Actually, you can see it. If you look in the top right, if we see the little numbers that are popping up over here, that's telling us where we're setting it. So you've got a lot more precision here. So we're setting it right on 200 hertz. And what this means is that it'll start rolling everything off. Everything from about 70 hertz below is going to be completely removed. And then everything from 70 hertz right up to 200 hertz, it's going to roll that in, which means it's not going to just cut it. It's going to give you a little bit of, uh, a little bit of reduction there. So if we play this now. Please. And the reason that you'd use that, that's your rumble. That's if you're in a high traffic street, if there's a bus or a truck running past, if you've got some ground hum, at like that 60 hertz ground hum that you'll sometimes have in there, that's what that can do. So I wouldn't say always, but almost always, especially in the home studio, adding a high pass filter or a low cut filter, it's sometimes called, is a good idea. Now we can grab some other, uh, other bands here and start sculpting this. So if we turn on band number two, 
and drag this one across. So this one, we may want to be a parametric EQ. So this is the one that we're going to use to find a frequency that we may not like and maybe remove it. So because I've got a nasally voice, we're gonna come here to the middle and we're gonna play this and I'm going to turn this up and we're just gonna gently sweep it side to side and see if there's a frequency that really doesn't sound good. I've always wanted to learn to surf, but I never had the time to learn to do it. I'm always worried about... Again, there's that nasally kind of tone around about there, and it'll depend, and it also depends on your ear, but somewhere in that sort of mid-range is where you're going to tend to find some, some tones that maybe you don't like or that are not going to work well. So if I didn't like this particular tone, for instance... About what might be underneath... Let's cut it. So we can just reduce that. Yes, I'm worried about sharks and stuff and manta rays that might sting me in the butt. Uh, and you can move it all the way down. So this is the difference here is that you've got complete control. Now your cue setting is how wide that's going to be. And you can do what's called notch filtering if you want. So if there's a frequency that you really don't like, but it's a very narrow frequency, a really narrow range here, you can grab your cue, drag that in, and then bring it down just at that. And you get this kind of cliff where it just jumps off a cliff there. So let's uh, take a listen. I've always wanted to learn to surf, but I never had the time to learn to do it. You could find that maybe you want to do like a really small cut here because you don't like that one. And then guess what? You can stick a third band on here and bring that down here and go, and actually, I also want to do a smaller, narrower cut here. So this is where you get all those funky, if you've ever looked at those really like up and down funky EQ curves and gone, what the heck is going on there? It's usually something like this. So that's, uh, that's what you can do to do cuts and uh, you can do the same to boost so if you if there was a frequency you really wanted to highlight so let's just say that on on this one i wanted a little a little boost up in the top end here because i'm using this dynamic microphone i'd grab another one here and I, i'd let's find a frequency that maybe i actually want to have more of i've always wanted to learn to surf but i never had the time to learn to do it I'm always worried about what might be underneath. Let's just say I wanted a little extra crispiness. I could throw a, another parametric there. Sometimes, especially when you're using a dynamic microphone or you've got some more muddy guitars or something, you want that high-end sparkle, and that's where you can use a shelf filter, which can come in handy. So let's turn on number five, and let's make this a shelf. So we'll grab number five. Johnny Five is alive, and we'll move it across. Oop, did I, did I grab the wrong one? No, no, there's my boost. Uh, so we can bring this one across to here. Now, the reason we're only sort of stopping here at 10,000 hertz is that's that's kind of the audible range. If you wanted to have a shelf, you can come here to parametric, and this time, let's go a high shelf. And the difference now is that, can you see that what it's doing there is instead of it just creating that notch, it's actually shelving that. So I'll turn it up just so you can see there. So see how it goes, boop and it just creates this shelf where it turns it up and then has it static from there. So I'll show you what this sounds like when we actually start playing it through a vocal. I've always wanted to learn to surf, but I never had the time to learn to do it. I'm always worried about what might be underneath. So there you go, a little, a little high shelf there, around about, uh, what's that, about 6,000 hertz. So that's not necessarily the EQ curve that I would end up with with this particular song, but it, it's interesting. You can actually take a look at that and, uh, and see if it's going to work. Now, if you want to sort of do a A-B comparison using that, we can come out of there and you can turn it on and off. So let's come back here and we'll play it. If we turn the plugin off, it sounds like this. I've always wanted to learn to serve, but on. I never had the time to learn to do it. I'm always worried about what might be underneath. Bring it back into the mix. Yes, I'm worried about sharks and stuff and man to raise the mind sting me in the butt. 